It's party time! Today on the show, we're gonna talk about Batman's sidekick, Robin. Did you know there were four of them? Well, maybe six? Technically even a seven? Anyways, we're gonna talk about all of them today on... Right? Family, Batman, Alfred, Commissioner Gordon, Batwoman, Batgirl, Robin, 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 Redbird, Red Robin, spoiler is Robin, Nightwing, Oracle, Huntress, spoiler! This is the network of people who help Batman fight crime, not only in Gotham, but all over the world. And that's not even all of them. Now, Batman came on the scene in 1939, dons the cowl, beating up bad guys, then he meets Commissioner Gordon, which I would count as the first member of the Bat Family. And then, in 1940, in Detective Comics number 38, Robin the Boy Wonder comes on the scene. And then, you may not even know this, Alfred didn't even show up until 1943. Totally weird, Robin was there before Alfred. So let's get back to why Robin was even created in the first place. Batman, when he first came out, he was very dark, very pulpish, and they wanted to kind of lighten him up, make him less dark, more sympathetic, so they gave him this teenage sidekick. They really wanted to make him appeal to their younger readers, so they felt that if they put a teenage sidekick in there, the younger readers would love it, and they would like live vicariously through him, and he's like, oh man, Batman's the best friend a kid could ever have. And you know what? Their idea worked, because it doubled the sales of Batman. The original look of Robin's costume was supposed to look a little bit like Robin Hood, and also the red-breasted American Robin, in keeping with Batman's winged motif. So now let's talk about the first, the original, the most famous, the most emotionally stable and well-adjusted Robin, Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson has even been Batman on occasion, when Bruce Wayne's out of town, or maybe dead, or he's like traveling the world, or whatever. That's how awesome Dick Grayson is. I like Dick Grayson. I like Dick Grayson as Batman, to be honest. I think he makes a great Batman when Bruce isn't around. Tim Drake, Robin number three, appeared in Batman number 436 in 1989, became Robin by issue number 442. So what sets Tim Drake apart from the other Robins is that Tim Drake actually applied for the job. He totally is a natural detective and really good at figuring stuff out. He totally went up to Batman and was like, dude, you need a Robin, I'd be a great Robin, you should hire me. The Batman's like, ooh, I don't know, Jason Todd died and I kind of feel weird about that. And he's like, no. You need a Robin, it'll help you, you'll feel totally better, you need a Robin. And then Batman's like, well, why should you be Robin? I mean, I don't even get it. And then he's like, well, A, I'm really good with computers, okay? B, I am an amazing detective, okay? I figured out that you were Batman when I was like nine, okay? And then I was at the circus when I was a toddler, and I saw Dick Grayson do some crazy quadruple somersault, okay? And later on, I saw some footage, and I saw Robin do the same exact quadruple somersault, and I put two and two together, and I figured out that Dick Grayson and Bruce Wayne was Robin and Batman. I figured that out when I was nine, okay? And now I'm 13, and then Batman was like, well, are your parents dead yet? Because you totally have to be orphaned to be a Robin. And Tim was like, well, not yet, but they probably totally will be. So Batman's like, well, I don't know, you're kind of a crappy fighter. And he's like, well, I understand that, but you can train me and I'll totally get better at it, so you should quit being a jerk and just let me be Robin. Alfred and Nightwing totally dig me and I think I should be Robin, so just give me the outfit already. I have here Tim Drake's first solo comic, Robin 3, Cry of the Huntress number one from 1992, still in the factory sealed plastic, and I'm about to depreciate its value. <laughs> we waited 20 years for this! This is from the time period when gimmicky covers got really popular, and they don't really do this anymore. My least favorite Robin, I would have to say, is Tim Drake? Maybe that's unfair, I know. I like his, his gumption of, like, applying for Robin, because, like, he figured it out. I think that's cool, but, I don't know, I just feel like he's kind of underdeveloped in a lot of ways. 